Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, Christmas is around the corner and like all shooters, Andy Crow's got his mates decorating the tree. Survival expert Johnny Crockett is back in the woods cooking up a storm out of stuff he's found there. First, Roy Lupton has a 40 mile an hour remote control lure to teach Granny Goshawk how to take pheasants and partridges. Falconry is all about fitness. If your bird hasn't been pumping its wings on the run-up to the season, you might as well have a budgie on your glove. Roy is a little behind with his training because of his hip-hop, so to speed things along a bit, he's created the fastest lure in the West. Capable of dragging bits of muntjac, impersonating a hare, whole rabbits, and a roe deer hide at up to 45 miles an hour across a wet field. What we've done is we've fitted an engine and a clutch and a big, a big drum on a uh, machine down there. We've got a servo on there that's attached to the throttle and so now we've got a remote controlled lure machine. So we can run a, a lure up to 45 miles an hour over about 500 metres uh, very, you know, in very quick succession and uh, really start getting some fitness into the birds. This is the first year that we've bothered flying the goshawks on the lures and uh, the results we're getting so far are, are phenomenal. Roy is bursting with eagle and hawk boxes. In total, there are six birds that need exercising in preparation for hunting. He's about to head up to Scotland for the blue hares. Once Ian has given his youngster an outing, Roy brings out the old girl. She's so old and wise, she remembers Roy before he became interested in girls without plumage. This is my old goss. And she is coming into her, what are you, 17th? Yeah, she's 16 years old, coming into her 17th season. And for the last four years, she's been in a, a breeding aviary because I wanted to make sure I got a, a couple of youngsters out of her. And uh, I just thought I'd take her out and give her one last hurrah. And it's amazing. I mean, she's been flying for a couple of weeks now, just getting back to it. I thought she was going to be a bit of a couch potato, but uh, she's already putting a few, uh, few rabbits in the bag. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks, she'll start putting a few hares and maybe a few pheasants in the bag as well. She might be long in the beak, but she's still fighting fit and won't be fooled by gimmicks, so Roy has to abandon the hair lure and use a real rabbit. Ian sets the motor turning and off she goes. As expected, she hits the spot. As I say, she's a, a smart old girl. She uh, just preempted the, the lure going, so she baited before it was level with us. Um, and uh, if she'd done that, she would have gotten it to it a little bit uh, too easy, so just held it back for a second and then waited for the lure to just go past parallel. And let her off and uh, now she chased it very well. Bearing in mind we've got a, a very good headwind against us today so it's probably they're probably flying into a headwind of about 10-15 miles an hour easily. Um, yeah she uh, she caught up with that no problem so yeah again just phenomenal the fitness that this brings on so quickly. I'm really really pleased with it. In complete contrast to this goshawk is the youngster and she's one of the fastest goshawks Roy has ever bred. This young lady is uh, incredibly fast. We're not going to get a true assessment of her speed today because she's flying in such a headwind. But the uh, the way this thing flies at the lure is just absolutely outstanding for speed. It's a shame she's got nothing up top. She's uh, she's definitely built for one thing, and uh, it's certainly not thinking. Falcons and eagles are like the Formula One racing cars of old. Agile and fast, but fragile if not treated with care. One thing that can help these birds stay healthy is having the right sort of transport box. The worst thing you can do for your bird's health, especially for lung conditions such as aspergillosis, is put your bird away damp. But if you do have to, then a box like this could be the answer. This box is made by a game hawker. Not only have they got a light fitted in them, but they've also got fans fitted at the back. And then it's constantly pumping the stale air out of the box and keeping a fresh flow of air through. And I can't really see the reason for people using wooden boxes anymore. Baby looks relaxed, leaving his bespoke accommodation, and is rested enough to put on a good show, pumping after that leer. He excels at being flown from the fist, whereas Roy's other eagle hunts in a different way, soaring high, then dropping onto his quarry. I think he's fifth or sixth season now. Um, obviously we've been hunting together since he was about 20 weeks old when I went over to Austria, started our hunting career over there. And uh, I've been hunting him successfully over here, but he's a, a superb eagle, especially, especially for off the fist work. Um, my other eagle, well, my other main eagle, Cappy, I mainly use him for working in the mountains for waiting on. So when I try and fly him on the, off the fist at brown hairs, he's not so great, but this eagle for off the fist acceleration is just absolutely phenomenal. Losing the light, Cappy gets the last run of the evening. 
the birds are race fit and we're looking forward to seeing all Roy's hard work pay off in the field. Now from Roy Lupton and his high flyers to David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. Olympic shooting star Peter Wilson is spearheading a campaign to try and save one of the best shooting grounds in Europe. A former city trader turned organic farmer may force the closure of Southern County shooting ground in Dorset if he succeeds in his claim that lead shot from the ground is incompatible with his organic farm status. Alistair Cooper says that lead pellets from the ground are raining down onto his farmland, killing livestock and polluting the land. Pete Wilson lives locally and uses the ground regularly. The International Gun Dog League Retriever Championship 2012, which is sponsored by Skinners, just like this programme, has been won by a dog that's fed on their field and trial crunching. Dave Latham's field trial champion, Dell Fleet Neon of Fenderwood, better known as Dell, took the championship held at Cordor Castle in Scotland. Bred by Mr S Crisp, Dell and Dave had previously won it in 2010 at Sandringham. It's a bad time to be a rat in South Georgia. A trial phase in 2011 was the largest rodent eradication ever attempted and succeeded in removing rats from a tenth of the infested areas. The second phase of the project will see a 25-strong team of scientists, helicopter pilots, chefs and engineers dubbed Team Rat embark on a four-month mission to eradicate the brown rat from the South Atlantic island. They're dropping 270 tonnes of poisoned bait from three helicopters. Botswana is to ban big game hunting from 2014. The South African country is one of the most popular destinations for plains game and dangerous game hunters, attracting people including the King of Spain. Ignoring protests from communities who depend on hunting for their livelihoods, the government says that a ban on hunting will help in the fight against poaching. Wildlife conservationists point to other African countries such as Kenya, where hunting is banned, and poaching is driving many of its iconic species such as lions and rhinos into extinction. Welsh TV channel S4C, or s has come under fire from the Welsh Government after its coverage of the Badger Cull on its flagship soap opera. Welsh politicians dodged the cull, deciding instead on a vaccination programme. In the BBC-made TV series Pobble of Cum, a cash-strapped farmer's wife shoots her TB-infected cows and then says the government doesn't have the backbone to sort the problem out and that farmers are not afraid to break the law. Hurt by the criticism, the Welsh Government tried to get the repeat of the programme withdrawn. Now, do you know who's top of the pops when it comes to hunting, shooting and fishing channels on YouTube? Well, Field Sports Channel crossed the 10 million views mark last week and it's inspired us to have a look at who else is topping the charts with big global audiences. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the full list with links below the screen. You can also see the list by going to this address. I'm pleased to report that Field Sports Channel is the biggest hunting, shooting, fishing channel outside the USA and we're 15th in the world. So, thank you for watching. And that's not all, we have a new weekly newsletter. It's all the best of Field Sports Britain each week, but in word form. It's out on the internet as a PDF, so ideal for reading on iPads and other tablets. The link is on the screen and in the description below the screen if you're watching us on YouTube. Country Pursuits TV have been having a smashing time with a caravan, and it's all in aid of charity. The film was done to raise money for 13-year-old Holly Warren, who needs £7,000 for a special wheelchair. This, of course, is not something you should try at home, and the filming and shooting was supervised by four marshals. And finally, Brian May has come out in favour of deer culling. Sort of. Following the story in the Sunday Times from a tip-off by Mr C. Jacoby that Brian May allowed deer to be shot on his land in Dorset, the animal rights activist and national treasure says there is not a trace of hypocrisy in standing by the necessary and controlled killing of deer while opposing the badger cull. Brian is now looking at birth control to keep the number of deer at a manageable level. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Interesting use of the English language there. Now we're off with Andy Crow after pigeons. If this solitary oak were a Christmas tree, then the decoys would be the baubles. Crowman's cousin Gary, the fairy, with the pigeon hide under the tree, packed full of surprises.
It's a cold morning and Crow has been keen to get out onto this maize stubble field. When we first arrived, a few thousand pigeons and crows lifted. It could be a fun day, especially if those lofted decoys catch the eyes of the flighting birds. It doesn't matter how good you are, these old lofting poles, they're, they're pretty flimsy. We want to get some uh, lofters out the top of the tree. Uh, these go out to about 20 foot, but you get a 20 foot lofting rod up there, bit of wind with the weight of the decoy, it's swaying like that, you can't get it where you want. So what we do, we take a, well cheat a bit, we take a, a ladder with us to get up the tree, um, get up the tree, and then you only need about 10, 15 foot of pole. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone unless you know what you're doing, so, because um, it is pretty dangerous. And that's why I've seen Gary up. Yeah, that's, so, um, <laughs> that's the only reason I've invited him today. <laughs> Gary works his way squirrel-like around the tree and with pinpoint accuracy he carefully places the decoys onto the branches. Over many years Gary has turned this into an art form, getting the angle just right so as not to put the birds off. Well, it is cold up there. We've never filmed Crow using the lofting poles before, so why today? Pigeons have been shot at a bit, and this tree's right out in the middle of a field. Um, it's a bit of a flight line up through here, and uh, it just helps out with the decoys, really. It just, uh, if, if I can get up, well, if Gary can get up a tree this time of year, I always stick him up there, so. Just get, get him right out on the top, Mush. Will you put decoys on the ground as well, though? Yeah, I'm going to have a spread of decoys out. Um, uh, what I've found at the moment, we're gonna, I'm probably going to put a whirly out to the right hand side of us, back behind us more, just for a bit of movement. Um, but what I've, I've been finding, they've not wanted to, um, haven't been wanting a whirly or a flapper. Other people might be finding it different, different birds, but in this area that they just don't want too much movement. But today it's, it's quite a lumpy field and I'm going to put, put a whirly out just for a bit of movement, just to try and attract their attention and see what happens. But they might want it, they might not. So, But if they don't, we just take it in and carry on with just a few floaters and some cradle. The field is scattered with fallen maize, a high protein diet and important to the birds as all of a sudden the temperature has dropped. You can tell which birds have been feeding on the cobs by the way they peck at it. Pigeons tend to pull the grain out, whereas a crow a peck like how at it and, um, and just break, take the, the insides out. They will, they will take it whole but, but a pigeon prefers to take it whole. Because the maize is such a good food source, Crow expects that the now pigeon-free field will soon be bringing the birds back, both pigeons and crows. Even though pigeons are the name of the game today, Crow wants the pattern to look natural, so he sticks in a few plastic crows as well. Right, let's get this show on the road. The chances are that we've pushed the pigeons onto Andy's neighbouring rape crop, which is actually what he's trying to protect. But the maize should bring them back, and they do return, in large numbers. The birds are dropping in from the front and from behind. The lofted decoys attracting them as they fly down the centre of the field. Both Andy and Gary are making some good shots. Not everything is passing just yards in front of the hide. The cousins have been shooting together for more than 30 years and they have a system. Gary calls the shots so they shoot in unison. This means the birds don't flare. So went now. Now. Oh, yeah, there. Play when? Now. Gary always calls, he, he says now, and that's when we both shoot it. Both shoot, you usually only hear one shot like then. He said now, and we both shot at the same time, two pigeons come down. It doesn't always happen, because Gary usually misses, but um, no, he doesn't, he's a good shot. <laughs> but no. Nah. That just means that the second one won't flare. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we, it's just, it's, all we hear is just one shot. Um, but if, if I can't get on a pigeon and Gary says now, it's just, that's the way it goes, Gary takes a shot. So he's the conductor? He is a conductor, yeah, he's, he works better that way. And then uh, the thing is, if I start calling and he misses, it's, it's my fault. At least if I let him call. When there is a quiet moment, the crows look tempting, but Andy will not be distracted and stays with the programme. There's plenty of time for him to get into the crow zone later in the week. 
Over the course of the day, there's a regular stream of pigeons, and by the end of it, the boys account for 189 pigeons, three crows, and two jackdaws. He gives in to temptation after all. Next, we're finding out how to stay well fed in a wild English woodland with survival expert Johnny Crockett. I'm going to show you how to make a delicious bread from flour, water, and an oven made out of a dustbin. So to go with the soup, and also as a as a dessert, we're going to add a bit of a bit of flour to some water, or alternatively, for those left-handed people, some water to some flour. And there we go. Look at that lot. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Fantastic. A little bit left over for later. And this is where you get your hands dirty. Well, I say you get your hands dirty. If ever there was any mud or anything left on your hands, this is where you get it off. We add a bit of water, sleeves up, and get stuck in there. That's it. Just keep turning it, keep twisting it. Now, you should be trying to get some dough, and the dough should be, it should be sticky enough to hold together, but it should also be dry enough so it doesn't stick too much to your hands. Some of it's going to stick. So the idea here is just add a little bit of water at a time. If you add too much, then you've got to add more flour and uh, it's easier to go and get some more water than it is to go and get some more flour. What we're going to use here is self-raising flour, which is my, my preferred one. It means you don't have to have yeast and it just makes it a little bit more palatable, or I find anyway. Now, what I'm going to do with this in a minute is I'm going to split it into two halves and the first half is going to be just plain bread and then the second half is going to be mixed with some, some blackberries. And uh, those blackberries, I may add some other berries as well, I'm, I'm not sure. But blackberry bread, I quite like. And that's, that's quite a nice sort of one to finish off the meal with as well. Um, especially washed down with a bit of slow gin. So we're getting there. Okay, now then, that is probably, by the time it's expanded with its self raising this. Yeah, so this one is going to be ideal for a dunky dunky into the soupy soupy. Now this is the bit that I'm really looking forward to, because this is the bit that I'm going to add the blackberries to. Now you could, if you want, just place them neatly or slap them on. See, just see whatever you feel like doing. And then you want to try and keep them inside the, the dough so it's like a surprise. There we go. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these on top of some billy can lids and we're going to put them in an oven. There we are, look at that. So there's going to be this one, which is for the dessert, and then there's this one, which is for dunky dunky soupy soupy. Lovely. It's hard to say how long you leave the bread. I go back and check it every 30 minutes or so, and then when it looks ready, I take it out. Well, the moment of truth. We shall uh, have to open it up, have a look. It's one of these things you shouldn't have a sneaky peeky just beforehand, because that can take all the heat out of the oven and you're starting from scratch again. But, oh, 
Oh, oh, oh. It should sound hollow. Yep, that's just about right. How about this one? Oh. Yes, beauty. From woods to the wider world of hunting, shooting, fishing and the countryside on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. We're off to Canada, where relentless pursuit hunting coyote and whitetail in Alberta part 103 by Outdoor Hub Hunting shows bow hunting, including calling coyotes, and it's dramatic. Keep heading west and we get to a deer herd in the South Pacific. Hunting rooster deer in New Caledonia part 51 shows Waikaro Moano after trophy rooster stags with, he is the first to admit, a couple of mistakes. We complete our round the world trip on rabbit hunting with CZ45222 rimfire rifle. Field Sports 1 is shooting rabbits from a vehicle and he is keen to share all his techniques. Using liquidized bait shows Shimano Dynamite Baits Johnny Wyatt on the best recipe he has. Liquidized corn and maggot. Now it's time for fish on some kind of mind-altering drug. Tuna Extra Extra Large Canso Nova Scotia Canada by Thomas Schmidt is the closest we can get. All set to a heady soundtrack. Back to Earth with the bump and modern trapping series part 38 dog proof coon traps by wilderness outfitters shows an excellent spring trap which you will have to check for legality in your own country but may give you some good ideas wilderness outfitters is currently the sixth biggest hunting shooting fishing youtube channel in the world we get little driven bird shooting on youtube so it is a joy to see a film of a pheasant shooting day at dungartill estate near dunkeld Perthshire in Scotland in late November 2012. This comes to us from Robert Wyatt. Finally, fans of the Pirates of the Caribbean will be surprised to find the film soundtrack used on this wild boar hunting film by 77580 Nunoz. It's in French, but the subtitles are hardly necessary to give you a clue about the action. C'est la grande track de vulan board. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.com. TV. Well, we are back next week when George Digweed will be shooting an 800 bird day on the pigeons. If you're watching this on YouTube, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button somewhere up there in the sky above me or go to our shows page on YouTube, www.youtube.com slash show slash Field Sports Britain, where you can subscribe to just this show and not all of our content or go to our website, Field Sports Channel. TV, click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or best of all, stick your email address into the constant contact form and we'll constantly contact you about our show, which is at 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. <laughs> <laughs>